just about set to go. This is scheduled for 12 rounds. As I look at my tail of the tape, I see that Frankie Lyles, two and a half inches taller, two and a half pounds heavier. He's a southpaw at age 30, taking on Mauricio Amaral, age 24. Amaral with a record of 23, 2 and 1, 19 knockouts. He's ranked number two in the IBF, number two in the WBA. His home is Sao Paulo, Brazil. And you see Frankie Lyles We're going to work here, trying to look good against uh, Amaral right away. Big, tall, he looks so much more stronger and more disciplined than uh, Mauricio Amaral. Amaral looks to be very awkward here in the early going. For Amaral, it's a second title shot. He lost to Chris Eubank on a 12-round decision for the WBO title. He only fought outside Brazil or Argentina three times, and two of those three times he fought outside of his home country. He lost his fight. However, he's on a string of eight straight wins with seven knockouts, but he hasn't fought anybody in the caliber of Frankie Lyles. Lyles again at age 30. You have to wonder how much longer he can continue to go, and that's what this fight's all about. Frankie Lyles, 27 and 1, 17 knockouts. You look at Lyles' career, and he's only lost once, and that was back in 92 to Tim Littles for the USBA title at that time, and that's the only loss on his record. Wild is a shot by the challenger. Now, as you take a look at him, it's Lyles in the white trunks to the left of your screen, the challenger with the black trunks and blue trim around the midsection of his trunks. Again, this uh, fight is scored in the 10-point must-scoring system, meaning that the winner of the round gets 10 points to lose at 9 or less. Fabulous Frankie, it says on his trunks. He has those white, almost silver trunks. And the black trunks is the challenger, Mauricio Amaral. Amaral from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And he's uh, just able to slip that punch by uh, Frankie Lyles. Lyles uh, needs to open up and get a little bit busy here. Also, when you have the left-handed fighter against the right-handed fighter, uh, things oftentimes look awkward, especially the front feet. We have that shot that we have right now. You see uh, Lyles has a real wide stance, and then he's 6'2 a half, uh, which is a good-sized guy for a 168-pounder. And you'll notice that on occasion, the front feet will get tied up. In fact, uh, Lyles has a tendency to want to step on the toe of his opponent and step on the foot of his opponent, and you see the opponent oftentimes look very awkward. The way Emerald threw that punch is very, very awkward. There can't be much power in that. However, with his 23 wins, he's got 19 knockouts. Now, uh, the champion hasn't done too much in this, and Emerald has done uh, virtually nothing here in the first round. We're inside of the 10-second mark here, and in fact, we're inside of the one-second mark as it's over. The bell ends round number one. Well, I guess you give that to the champ. Fairly even first round. We we'll give it 10-9 to Frankie Lyles. Not a tremendous amount of action for a world title fight, but uh, both of these guys feeling each other out. For Amaral, he just wants to see what he can do, and this is Amaral here. Mauricio Ozzi is manager, Macias Gomez is trainer. This is round two. Bob Sheridan here in King Vision. We're in Stuttgart, Germany. The principals, Frankie Lyles, the reigning champion in the WBA and the 168-pound division, taking on Mauricio Amaral, number two in the IBF, number two in the WBA. This is his night of nights, and believe me, folks, while it doesn't seem to be a big deal right now here in Germany for all the people down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, that are watching us on King Vision, this is some kind of big night. As I say that, a crisp left hand from the southpaw, Frankie Lyles bangs the chin of Emerald. Emerald backs off. He's trying to stay busy. He's an awkward sort of fighter. Hasn't fought the class of fighter that Frankie Lyles has been in with. Lyles takes a shot in the back of the head, but it doesn't shake him any. He's been in too long. Frankie has a tendency from time to time to hang that right hand, and he's open for the left hand of uh, Amaral, but Amaral throws his left hand with such an awkward uh, movement that there's no power behind it. You see that? That was a pretty good left hand, but still more of the left hands that he throws are kind of an awkward half hook that he throws. Part of that is because Frankie 
ties up that left uh, uh, outstretched foot of the uh, fighter, and it, it makes it very, very difficult for him. The right-handed fighter coming in with the left hand. Frankie continues to try to get position and work his foot either to the outside and step on that foot as he comes in and throw the right hand of his own. And that's why Emerald can look awkward sometimes because he continues to get that foot tied up. You see that time? Uh, actually, you couldn't see it, though, the shot that you have, but here in the ring, their feet are actually below our eye level. So uh, it's a nice uh, viewpoint for us to be able to continue to see Frankie Lyle stepping on the foot of uh, Emerald. And it's making Emerald look awkward. It's time I'm staggery. He really isn't staggery. Although that was a pretty crisp left hand that bounced off his forehead at that time. Long looping left that time. You see Emerald fight back and why he's in this title fight. And that long, long looping left catches Emerald. Neither fighter has been shaken to this point. Neither fighter has been hurt in any way. Nobody cut, nobody down. Frankie making Emerald miss. All right, now the referee calls time out. And let's see what this is all about. And it looks like he needs to get his shoot tied. And Johnny on the spot is Hubert Earl, the referee who realizes that Emerald needs to shoot tied. Oftentimes they tape those up there, but uh, not in this case. All right, here we go. Mauricio Emerald in the black trunk with his back to you. Now to the left of your screen is the fellow from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Frankie Lyles in the white trunks. He allows the southpaw, begins to paw with the right hand, looking to drop the big left, which is his power hand. He faints with the right hand, and then doesn't throw the left hand as Emerald decides to commit it exactly the wrong, wrong time for Frank Lyles. Lyles has got to get busy with that uh, right hand. Use that jab and work off it more. He's been parring with the jab, and his left has been ineffective. There he is that time with a sneaky left hand, and I guess that was a little bit effective. Caught him behind the ear as the bell ends, round number two. All right, this is the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World, the 168 pound division. The champion in white trunks is Frankie Lyles. Mauricio Emerald in the black trunks with the blue trim. And again, Frankie Lyles continues to step and kick that. Uh, front foot of the challenger and the challenger although he's awkward enough on his own every time he gets his foot stepped on he looks even more awkward Frankie Miles has a 74 inch reach and Emerald has a 72 inch reach and it's, uh, it shows in this fight because if you know Notice the way Frankie stands. He really has his body shifted to the side where Emerald is more squared away facing him. So Frankie not only has a reach advantage of uh, two inches, but he takes advantage of it because his body is twisted. And that right outstretched jab of his is way out there. Unfortunately for Frankie, he's not doubling with the jab, and he's been part with it a lot and not keeping 
them are all off. However, he, he has been busy and has Emerald who's been trying to counter. There's the sneaky left hand by Frankie Lyles. Lyles loops with that left, left hand, bangs him on the forehead. And there's uh, Lyles really backing him off with the left hand that time. Again, it's uh, very difficult to judge the fighters when they come up from any countries with the exception of uh, Mexico. The Mexican fighters, the Puerto Rican fighters, when they come up to the United States or over to Europe to fight, they uh, oftentimes face a, a lot of difficulty because they don't have the sparring partners down there at the different weight classifications that they can get in the States or in Mexico or in the lighter weights in Mexico, in, uh, especially in Puerto Rico, where they can get a lot of work. So they come up, they won 10 or 12 fights in their native Argentina or Brazil, and with very few exceptions, they run into trouble, usually. Because Emerald, uh, we thought, was going to be a real good one here, and he may yet prove to be a real good one, but Frankie having it his way right now. Frankie scoring the heavy blows. Thus far, he hasn't been able to drop this guy. Frankie faints with the left hand. The left hand, don't forget, is his straight left. That's a, his power hand, being the southpaw that he is. The southpaw jabbing with the right and continues to jab with the right. And he has a tendency to, to drop that right hand, which is his jabbing hand. And you think that Amaral would try to take advantage of it, but it's seemingly when he drops it, he has his right foot outside the left foot of Amaral. And Amaral being shorter and also giving away a couple of inches in reach, has difficult getting in to land the left hook. You see, he has the tendency to want to do it. And Frank is very slick. A lot of these fighters do things that you really have got to be an aficionado of the, uh, aficionado of the sport to really appreciate what they're doing as the bell ends round number three. And another round for Frank Lyles. Nothing brilliant, nothing tremendously outstanding. Just winning every round, in my opinion, 10-9, 10-9, and 10-9. This is Amaral from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Show you a little replay here of some of the action in round number three. And you see the nice looping left hand by the champ, and then he follows up with a grazing right hand. And so the champion is throwing more and landing more, and that's how you win rounds, 10-9. And he's done it for three rounds. We're coming up to round number four. We're at the Hans Martin Schleier Hall in Stuttgart, Germany. All right, here we go. Round number four. Paul, who's been fighting mostly in Latin America, not fighting the quality of fighter that a Frankie Lyles is, of course, a reigning world champion. You wouldn't expect him to. But he's ready for this fight. A lot of pressure on him because in Brazil, this is a huge, huge fight. You're not getting the great crowd reaction here in Germany because this fight doesn't mean a lot to the German people. They're more interested in European title shots. And, of course, they've got a heavyweight by the name of Axel Schultz that fights for the world title, and they'll be going crazy for that one. Now again, there's a situation where Amaral looked like he was staggered, but he wasn't. He was just off balance again as he was spun around in this fourth round by the uh, champion, Frankie Lyles. Inside of 15 seconds to go in the fourth round. Lyles paused with that right hand. Looping shot, misses with the left hand. Frankie goes with a double jab, and round four ends. Another successful round for Lyles. Lyles, again, is doing exactly what he needs to do to just control his fight. He's controlling the pace and the flow of the fight. Tonight, there are two title fights, plus Tyson eyes his next opponent, Buster Mathis Jr. Uh, Jack and Jackie, two of the nicer people in the boxing world, left California and moved to Brussels, Belgium, recently. All right, this is round five. Frankie Lyles in the white trunks has his title on the line against Mauricio Amaral. And Amaral is going to trying to light a fire underneath him. He needs exactly that. He's got to get busy. And it looks like he's got some sort of uh, rush of adrenaline right now because he looks like he's trying to get busy. And the best way to 
but Frankie to handle that is to bounce that left hand, and, uh, and he did just that. Bounced it off the right temporal bone of Emerald, the challenger. It's Lyles, the champ, in the white trunks, the challenger, Emerald, in black trunks. Neither fighter has been down. Uh, Emerald looked like he might have been shaken with one shot during the course of the fight, but nothing real serious. Neither fighter really visibly shaken. You take a look at the body of these two guys, and they're obviously in magnificent shape. Frankie Lyles at age 30. This is his third title defense. Frankie Lyles' uh, last loss, you got to go back to 1992 against Tim Littles, and since then, uh, he had uh, three 12 round fights, two of them for world titles, and one of them for the North American Boxing Federation title. So the fact that we're in the fifth round cruising along here is just what Lyles likes to do. Surprise him with that left hand. Emerald so far has been able to absorb what Lyles has been doing, and maybe that's his philosophy to try and get through the first four, five, six rounds and then open it up as we get down uh, the stretch a little bit. But he's going to have to throw a lot more punches than he is if he's going to start winning any rounds. And you can't give a champion this many rounds unless you might have some lead in your glove for later on. I don't know. Lyle scoring the heavier blows during the course of the fight and certainly scoring more blows. You see the challenger making a fight of it and the champ satisfied to counter at this stage. Earlier in the first two or three rounds, uh, Frankie was forcing the fight a little bit more, and now it's Amaral trying to force it uh, a little bit more. I see some blood up on the shoulder of the challenger, but I can't uh, for the life of me tell you where it's coming from. It looks like he's got a bloody nose, and it probably was uh, from the glove of Frank Lyles. Lyles' jaw is hanging down, which is usually indicative of a fighter who's fatigued, but Frankie is in tremendous shape. Maybe that's just the way he likes to fight. It's not especially a good way to fight to hang that jaw because if he get clipped on it, you can uh, get a tendon torn inside the mouth or end up with a broken jaw. Closing seconds now, the fifth. A more even round is this round. But I think Lyles still did enough enough to win the round. I've got Lyles on my scorecard winning each one of the first five rounds. The official uh, scoring will be done here by Guillermo Perez Panita of Panama, Samuel Con of Puerto Rico and Enzo Montero of Mexico. We take a look, look at this uh, replay. And we're back live now. Talking in the corner with the challenger. Mauricio Amaral of Sao Paulo, Brazil. 23, 2 and 1, 19 KOs, ranked one of the IBF and the WBA. He, he has a number two ranking. So he's a good one. But again, he hasn't had the opportunity to fight the likes of Frankie Lyles. His last time I'm out was in, uh, uh, actually in July, he won a 10-round decision over Fitzgerald Bruni. That was down in Brazil. And his last, last let me see here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fights have all been in Brazil. And the last time he fought outside of Brazil was in England in 1994, and he lost that fight in the WBO championship fight against Chris Eubanks. So he's not afraid to be in a world title shot. And Eubanks uh, is the type of guy that can make a guy look good as Emerald did in that fight. 
because he seems to rise to the occasion and the ability of his opponents. Frank Lyles, on the other hand, is real serious and would like to take this guy out, finish this thing, get it over with as soon as he can, and not mess around with the awkward Amaral who caught him with an awkward shot that time. But you see what I mean about the power of that left hand? There's no power behind that. That's why it didn't hurt uh, Frankie Lyles. Emerald trying to make more of a fight of it. Actually, in the fifth round, I was kind of in a toss-up situation whether I should give that to uh, Amaral or not, but still Lyles landed more, more punches. Uh, just Amaral was more aggressive in that uh, fifth round than he had been through the, the course of the fight. Frankie he may have got a little, little bit of a second win yet now, because if you notice, he, he's chasing Emerald a lot, lot more rather than backing up, up and countering as he did in the fifth, fifth round. That's a little bit of blood trickling from the nose of the challenger Emerald. Emerald in black to the right of your screen to the left. That's Frankie Lyles. Wow, the punches of Emerald. He loads up a right hand and misses. Frankie able to slip the punch. Punch and get out, out of there. And then he goes back with the double jab. And that's the training of Freddie Roach. That double jab and then throw the left. He'd been fading with that uh, left hand of his. And he's loaded it up a couple of times. But really hasn't landed a real good one uh, to this point in the fight. Satisfied to win the battle of the jabs and that's what he's doing the reason why he wins the battle of the jabs is because he doubles with it see Amaral will hook with his left hand he'll jab with his left hand he'll just hold it out there like he did that time and sometimes he'll hold it out and then come in and throw a right hand the problem is is when you do that a guy can walk right through that jab he can dip underneath it come in and land a left hook of his own and in this case a left hand is really dangerous you see the wild shot again by Amaral Emerald again being aggressive here in the sixth round, but they call it, in order to win, you need effective aggressiveness. Now, he has landed two punches in this round, but, you know, what damage they did to Frankie is beyond me. Uh, it just doesn't look like they're hurting him too much at all. Frankie back to that jab again, works off the jab, goes with the left hand lead, misses with the left hook, dips a little bit, gets Emerald to come in, ties him up inside. I mean, basically, Frankie Lyles is just outboxing Amaral. And Amaral showing some aggressiveness from time to time. A better round again for Amaral, but still, I don't know if it's enough for him to win that round. I'm going to give it to him because it's as close to any round that he has won during the course of the fight. If he's going to win the fight, he's going to have to do a little bit more than that, though. We show you this replay here, and you see Amaral continues to work hard, forcing the champion back. But other than that, he didn't do a tremendous amount during the course of that round. Bob Sheridan here on King Vision, working in conjunction with uh, Cedric Kushner. I'm well, glad that you people can be watching around the world. Now we can show you the body shot here. Boom, right there. Nice body shot. And you see how quick that... Uh, Frankie Lyles get out of there, and based on that nice body shot is why I gave that round actually on my scorecard as we come up to the seventh round. I gave that sixth round to Mauricio Amaral. Well, we're past the midway mark now as we're into the seventh round. This is scheduled for 12. It's Frank Lyles, the champion in white, Mauricio Amaral in black. Amaral on my scorecard has won only one round, and that's the sixth. He may have won the fifth, which would make it a little bit closer. Other than that, Frankie having things his way. But if, in fact, Amaral began to turn things around in the fifth and continued through the sixth, Frankie had better put a stop to it right now. The uh, biggest uh, factor throughout the course of the fight is that uh, Frankie Lyles is just...